it's finally here. Duke Nukem Forever is real, and I have played it. Was it worth the 14-year wait and all the hype? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Nothing could possibly live up to a decade and a half of everyone's wild expectations and speculation. But that doesn't automatically mean it's bad, as some would like to imply. Let me just go ahead and say that as a longtime Duke fan, I think the game is awesome, but we'll get to exact reasons soon enough. First, let's look at Duke's amazing package. The game is currently on PC, Xbox 360, and PS3, though I've got the PC version here. Nothing special to see, just a case, a DVD, and a manual. But there's also the Balls of Steel, limited edition of the game, which retails for about a hundred bucks. It includes the regular game, a Duke Nukem bust, hardcover history and art book, postcards, a sticker, comic book, paper craft, poker chips, mini deck of cards, Duke dice, and a certificate of authenticity. The bust is actually more of a paperweight, though it's still pretty sweet, and Duke's hair reminds me of Coral. The art book is great and sheds some light on much of the development process, although if you get the Brady Games Balls of Steel edition guide, you also get the contents of the art book and then some. So if you want the book but don't want the full Balls of Steel edition, just get the guide. The game uses Steam to install and play on the PC, so if you have an issue with that, well, get over it or get the console port. And this brings me to my first complaint. For a game started in 1997, I figured I would be able to play it on my Windows 95 computer with a Voodoo 2 card and 32 megabytes of RAM, but no. In fact, the CD-ROM drive doesn't even recognize the disc, so you'll need a newer machine to run the game, which is just a shame. Now, actually, it turns out this version of Duke Nukem Forever was pretty much started in 2007 and finished in 2009, with further polish, multiplayer, and console ports taking up development time since then. The game starts with an absolutely rad video showing the various teams and companies involved with the game, as well as a quick overview of the events of the previous game, the iconic Duke Nukem 3D. Yeah, there have been others since 3D, but Forever is the sequel to that game, despite the many other Duke titles since 1996. It pretty much just pretends those don't happen. Once you get into the menu, which reminds me a bit of the Duke Nukem 3D stats screen, you have the option to play the single-player campaign, multiplayer modes, change options, apply any unlocked extras, download DLC, and make like a tree and get out of here. It's all pretty self-explanatory, so let's just dive into the single-player game, where you'll have a choice of the original difficulty levels from Duke Nukem 3D. You only have the first three to begin with, unlocking the hardest difficulty once you finish the game. And the game starts out with Duke speaking as only he can while taking a leak. This is taking forever. Time to stop pissing around and get this big guy back into action. If you're not familiar with Duke Nukem 3D and later games, the formula is super simple. It's a first-person shooter where you play the uber-macho Duke Nukem. He's always got something to say, and it's usually vulgar. You see, aliens are attacking Earth and taking the planet's babes because they're evil and need human females to hatch their young, or something. It's up to Duke to do what no army could ever do, and that's destroy every alien maggot who dares cross his path all while spewing one-liners, referencing about every pop culture subject imaginable, and enjoying his women. It's not the second coming of first-person shooters or the most genius and amazing game ever created. No, it's just a simple setup for simple fun that stars someone who is mostly a lovable jerk. Some story is there, but it's really irrelevant. It's all about shooting stuff and seeing how Duke reacts in various situations presented. Duke Nukem Forever at its heart is old-school 3D Realms first-person shooter action, so if you enjoyed their older games, you're going to find something to like here. For one thing, the weapons are mostly the exact same lineup as Duke Nukem 3D. You've got the pistol, which is now a golden 1911 semi-automatic with a laser sight. The shotgun, which is perfect for close range and just feels fantastic. The Ripper chain gun, which has a high rate of fire but needs to reload frequently the unique shrink ray, which is largely unchanged other than looking like a project from Aperture Science, the freeze gun, which now shoots a mid-range stream instead of projectiles, kind of like a flamethrower with ice, the RPG, which holds five rocket-propelled grenades that can now lock onto enemies, the devastator, which fires 69 rockets rapidly through dual cannons without reloading, laser trip mines, which attach to any surface or enemy and explode when the laser is activated, and pipe bombs, which are basically grenades that are activated remotely. 
Both the laser trip mine and pipe bombs are now mapped to their respective hotkeys, which encourages more frequent use and makes them much more efficient to use. You also have the return of the holoduke, which spawns a holographic version of yourself to distract enemies. Although now it's far more useful since Duke also cloaks after placing it, and the holoduke now speaks and walks around shooting blanks. Although it's not particularly intelligent. I am here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all out of ass. Another returning feature is Night Vision, now called Duke Vision, which you have at all times. This is quite simply a way to see in pitch dark areas. The only complaint I have with this is the high pitched noise that plays during use. It made me use Duke Vision as little as possible simply because it hurt my head. Steroids also make a return, not only causing Duke to run a bit faster, but also ensuring a roid rage which turns Duke into an absolute punching machine. It's pretty much the same as Doom's Berserk power-up or Painkiller's Demon Mode. A new addition is Beer, which gives Duke near invincibility for a short time, as well as providing excellent belching abilities. But it appears Duke is somewhat of a lightweight as only one beer blurs his vision significantly. There are also a few new weapons like the Railgun, very similar to the Railgun in Quake and the scoped Instajib rifle in Unreal Tournament, Assault Trooper Laser, which fires three shots of blue energy projectiles at a time, the AT Captain Laser, which fires the same blue things in a constant stream, and the Enforcer Gun, which fires three homing missiles at an enemy at a time, but has a very low ammunition count. The old school weapons all feel pretty darn good to shoot aliens with, but the new weapons I'm simply not a fan of. They're hard to tell apart from each other at first glance, and for whatever reason they just don't click for me like the others do. They're okay, but they lack a certain oomph, and I avoid using them if I can. If you're a fan of the original Duke 3D, you'll no doubt see a glaring omission, and that is Duke's mighty foot. Yes, you can now melee enemies with your gun butt, which works the same way, but it's just not as satisfying as kicking an enemy into submission, and I don't know why it was removed. You can, however, perform execution moves from time to time, one of which involves Duke using his mighty foot to kick aliens to death, or punching off an alien's head, or whatever. It's a cool addition, and it adds some flair to the gunplay, but I just wish the mighty foot was always there to use. Another thing I really don't understand regarding weapons is the fact that there is now a two weapons only limit. What the balls. Supposedly this was implemented so that they could add more weapons to the game. One of the reasons is that having so many weapons on a console controller isn't very efficient, and radial dials or weapons menus start to get really complex. Personally, I think they could have pulled it off somehow, and I really wish they did, and even Duke himself makes a reference to this. Maybe you make me wish I had three guns. Individual ammo has also been removed, and instead you have EDF ammo crates and such scattered around to keep you supplied. And there are plenty of weapons scattered around every level due to the plentiful presence of EDF soldiers, as well as the weapons aliens drop when dead. This ensures that you'll pretty much always have the weapon you need at the time you need it, making the gameplay simpler and more streamlined, and actually presents a further element of strategy in that you'll have to plan ahead when choosing your weapons. It still pisses me off a bit, but after a while you get used to it. Another huge change is that there's no longer any kind of health, and therefore no health packs or medkits. Duke instead only has Ego, which acts as a regenerating health bar. Yes, I can hear you Duke 3D purists groaning just like I did, but hold on just a second. Think about it, Duke can't die, his Ego just gets bruised a bit. He regains his confidence and then goes back into action. I don't think that's so unlike Duke. Now, sure, you have to take cover to ensure you don't die, but you did in every other Duke game as well. It's just that now it's less clunky and annoying. I've got to say, I hated this ego thing at first just on principle, but after seeing how the game plays and how the levels are set up, I got right into the groove of things and didn't even notice it. Now, sure, it's not realistic, but neither are health packs when you think about it. Now, some of you may be saying, man, they really dropped the ball here with all these changes. This is almost nothing like the Duke I remember. And while that's true to a degree, I have to say that once you play it, it truly feels like a Duke game, and it is good. Duke's personality is back, and his ego is bigger than ever. He is voiced once again by the legendary John St. John, and it is freaking rad. I'm gonna rip your eye out and piss on your brain, you alien dirtbag! Duke lives in a ridiculous world where practically everyone worships him, especially the women. I mean, come on, he saved the freaking planet on multiple occasions. A little narcissism can be forgiven. Oh yeah, I'm bringing sexy back. 
Or, okay, a lot of narcissism. Not to mention a healthy sexual appetite. He is a full-blooded American bachelor, and his love of women is only surpassed by his love of himself. Following the standard set by Duke 3D, Forever takes the idea of needless yet awesome interactivity and ups the ante in every way. If it looks like it can be used, consumed, or otherwise molested, it probably can. To name just a few, there are pool tables to play nine ball on, vending machines to empty, video poker machines to play, cigars to smoke, various weights to lift, whiteboards to draw nasty perverted images on, Balls of steel, pinball machines to play, douchebag actors to punch out, souvenir photo machines to pose for, popcorn to pop, rats to pop, logs to paint the room with, skin mags to peruse, adult toys to turn on, strippers to tip, and glory holes to, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you have an added incentive to do many of these things now because of the ego system. In order to increase Duke's ego, you can interact with these items for a permanent ego boost, which is absolutely required to stay alive in the later parts of the game. It's a very unique and Duke-like way to expand on the whole regenerating ego mechanic, and it fits right in with the ridiculous feel of the game. And to me, that's the entire draw of Duke Nukem Forever. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely immature, over the top, and there's hardly a serious moment in the entire game. Everything from the obvious pop culture references to the major and minor events that take place in the game are a nice change of pace from practically every other shooter out there. Like Duke 3D, there are jokes made at the expense of movies, companies, and even other games, like Dead Space. That's one dead space marine. And of course, Halo. Power armor is for pussies. Silly references and easter eggs like this are all over the place, and I've barely scratched the surface of the vast amount of them in the game. A personal favorite section of mine is the Duke Burger levels, where you get shrunken down to action figure size and have to navigate the level from a rat point of view. Many of the enemies have also been downsized, leading to some very unique battles involving overturned soda cups and various cans and condiment containers. It also led to some very intense sections where enemies that are normally pretty harmless become giant hulking beasts of fury when played as Little Duke. This was the first time I'd experienced something like this in a game, and I loved it. I could list a dozen similar moments where I was just smiling ear to ear and having a blast, but the point I'm trying to make is that the game did not get boring. Just when the shooting and one-liners are starting to get tedious, something else comes along to change things up. Two major recurring events to change things up are driving sections and physics puzzles. Both of these feel heavily influenced by games like Halo and Half-Life 2. There are at least four different vehicles to drive. Like an RC car you can drive while shrunk in a casino. And a monster truck you can drive in between some large outdoor desert areas. The physics puzzles vary in effectiveness, though. Several of them are just simple seesaw puzzles or involve moving weighted barrels around a level. These are kind of lame, and can really bring the game to a crawl after about the third or fourth time you come across them. They're short and do have some variations in between them, but they can still be aggravating, especially near the end of the game. The last things I really want to hit on are the NPCs, enemies, and levels themselves. The NPCs are mostly just there for atmosphere when needed, like random people at strip clubs and around Vegas. About the only thing that really distracted me from the whole experience was the character and facial animations. They're pretty much awful, like something out of an early PS2 game. Thankfully, you don't see these other human characters too much, but when you do, it's like, wow! What kind of terrible thing did you endure, Mr. President? You look like a freaking freak! The aliens are decent enough, though, and they're fun to kill, which is kind of why they're there, so that's good. I really like the designs that went into the aliens, since they're pretty much updated and evolved versions of the Duke 3D aliens. They're also a lot more intense, like the frantic pig cops that will run at you and rip off your face, and the octobrains, which now pick up and throw objects at you in addition to brain blasts. The protozoid slimers are a pretty notable missing alien, although they've been essentially replaced by the Pregnator. Really, they're a dick and ball sack with legs. And they ejaculate their seed at you and try to hump your face. Which is thoroughly disgusting. They hatch from egg pods like the protozoid slimers did, and are actually even more similar to the face huggers from the Alien movies. Finally, there's the levels, and by extension, the graphics. 
I really don't have much to say here because I thought they did the job. The levels keep things interesting and vary enough to keep things from getting stale, and many of the designs are just fun to play through. Although some of them can be a bit expansive, and every time Duke runs he gets all out of breath like an asthmatic emphysema patient. I don't know, maybe all that smoking is catching up to him, and it's a minor complaint, but it is annoying. And I don't see why some people are complaining so much about the graphics. Now, sure, it's not Crisis 2 or Metro 2033, but who cares? Even Duke 3D wasn't a graphical powerhouse in its day compared to games like Descent and Quake. The effects didn't get in the way and weren't distracting to the gameplay, so I have no issues with them looking a tad dated compared to some games. Well, on the PC at least. I also played the console versions of the game, and those are somewhat screwed. Frame rate issues, ugly aliasing, some lower quality textures, and awkward control issues, not to mention extremely long loading times, are very real problems. I will admit those do distract from the gameplay, and I only hope those versions get patched soon because they pale in comparison to the PC game. Once you beat the campaign, you're given the option to play the game again on the highest difficulty mode, as well as enabling options and cheats in the extras menu. These range from useless to pretty cool and amusing. They're all pretty self-explanatory, so yeah, that's that. I will say that the DNF timeline and old gameplay videos are freaking awesome, if you're curious about how the game evolved over the years. There have been practically five different Duke Nukem Forever games, so it's interesting to see what could have been. The other main feature of Duke Nukem Forever is the multiplayer. There are four types to choose from. Duke Match, Team Duke Match, Capture the Babe, and Hail to the King. Right now there are ten multiplayer maps available, though I'm sure there will be more coming through DLC. And you can have up to eight players, and there are Unreal Tournament-style mutators to activate. In fact, the entire multiplayer is most easily compared to UT, and to me that is freaking awesome, because that's like my favorite multiplayer game ever. You've also got tons of player statistics to monitor if you so choose, as well as challenges to meet by playing with others online. There are tons of these challenges and really provide a tasty incentive to keep playing. The multiplayer modes themselves are incredibly old school. You've got Duke Match, which is classic free-for-all deathmatch. It's either kill or be killed, and it's just a frantic wild bunch of madness, just like Duke 3D. In fact, it's even got a remake of Hollywood Holocaust, complete with many of the same secrets, and it's a nostalgia overload. Jetpacks are also available in multiplayer, which makes me wonder why they aren't in the single-player campaign. And I swear, shrinking people and then stepping on them is always good for a laugh and never gets old. Another couple items exclusive to multiplayer are the double damage statue, which does exactly what it says it does, and the bottle of whiskey, which grants you temporary invulnerability. Capture the babe mode, which is capture the flag, is also pretty traditional except that you capture live babes instead of a flag. The twist here is that they misbehave and will occasionally block your view until you give them a friendly spank. You also only have access to the girl's gun while carrying her, which is slow to fire but can kill opponents in one well-placed shot. Then there's Hail to the King, which is kind of like King of the Hill or Domination mode and is probably the least popular game type. There are two teams which fight for control of a randomly placed nuke symbol. Whoever gains the most points by having the most people in control for the longest amount of time wins. It's pretty much a mosh pit of guns and bullets and can be frantic and fun, but it's just kind of there and I don't play it much. I also have to point out that the multiplayer is a bit buggy right now. Every few matches I'm running into some bizarre lag and choppiness that's beyond simple ping issues, and it's not just me either. There's also been some exploitation by hackers already, and that's never fun. Nothing a patch can't fix, at least I hope. Your reward for playing through multiplayer isn't any kind of perks or weapons upgrades or any of that nonsense, but simply a leveling up of your duke so you can customize things. You can earn titles, hats, and shirts, which have no purpose other than to amuse and set yourself apart. But Duke's digs are where the customization really happens. This is a huge version of Duke's penthouse suite and is chock full of interactive items and random decor to unlock. Again, it serves no real purpose, but it's at least a fun distraction for a little while, and it keeps me coming back to multiplayer mode. If anything, I keep playing to unlock babes, which cater to differing fetishes and are simply there to ogle. For example, a French maid... You must make a good hero sandwich, because you're giving me a foot long. 
and an Asian cat girl who makes shadow warrior jokes. Who wants some wang? Not me. I want some duck. As much as I'd love to say that there's going to be much more where this came from in time, with the excellent and open modding tools the game comes with, just like Duke 3D, I can't. Sadly, there aren't any official modding tools available at all right now. In fact, even the dev console has been disabled for the full game for unacceptable reasons that are complete crap. Hopefully this is remedied soon, because that was an absolutely huge reason Duke became so popular in the first place. The community. If the community gets bored, the game will die a slow and painful death in time, while it could instead live on for years. So now for the final verdict. Is Duke Nukem Forever worth your time? For me, it absolutely was. I had a lot of fun with it, and it felt like a Duke game, even though some of the modernized changes were kind of weird. The single-player game is between 8 and 12 hours long, depending on how you play, so it's got a fair amount of content compared to many other shooters out now. And did I mention it was a lot of fun? Now sure, it's not perfect, it might not be worth the full 60 bucks, and does have some unseemly flaws here and there. It's not Duke Nukem 3D 2. It does not feel totally old school. It's quite simply a weird mixture of 90s and modern game mechanics that kind of feels like a freak show. But it wasn't bad enough to overshadow the good, rewarding, fun gameplay I experienced, not by a long shot. I'll admit some of that was nostalgia, but I think this will still resonate with many gamers who just give it a chance, check their overcritical brains at the door, and just enjoy a game for a game's sake. Critics and haters will continue to rip DNF a new one to feed their agenda, but you know what? It's Duke Nukem. Your argument is invalid.